So now it's time for me to share with you some qualities, the literary qualities of this surah, inshaAllah ta'ala. And I'll begin with the structure of the surah. Not easy to discover, but I'll, I'll, for those of you that are taking notes, the, the four sisters, um, I'm going to share this for you. So the first part of the surah, which is from the first ayah to the ninth ayah, is the argument for Judgment Day, which was وَالنَّازِعَاتِ غَرْقَى وَالنَّاشِطَاتِ نَشْطَى وَالسَّابِحَاتِ سَبْحَى All the way to أَبْصَارُهَا خَاشِعَةً First to the ninth ayah. What was it? If I remind you quickly, it was the raid of the morning. And through the raid of the morning, Allah says, that's what Judgment Day is going to feel like. Right? That was the, the first ayah to the ninth ayah. In the tenth to the fourteenth ayah, now this is section two, Allah deals with people who are skeptical about the hour. إِنَّا لَمَرْدُودُنَا فِي الْحَافِرَةِ are we going to be taken, brought back from the ditch when our bones have decayed? And all of a sudden they'll find themselves awake in the middle of the night. You remember that? So that's the skeptics of the, after, of the Day of Judgment. That's your section two. Then section three is a lesson from history. What's that lesson from history? You remind me. The Pharaoh. Moses and the Pharaoh. That's your section three from 15 to 26. That goes on. And then you've got your section four, which is the world around you and how Allah's creative power. But that section three is actually married to section four in that Allah described the great empire of the Pharaoh and then compared that to what he created all around you that trumps the empire of the Pharaoh, right? So that would be the world around you and observing the world, the world around you. Um, and so then we get to, so now how many sections do we have? Four, right? The fifth section of the surah is again a description of Judgment Day. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبْرَى يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُوا الْإِنسَانُ مَا سَعَى وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَنْ يَرَى Description of the afterlife once again. The one who was afraid of standing in front of his master that we were just talking about, right? So that's your fifth section. And finally the sixth section is they question the hour. When is it coming? And Allah says, what is it your business to know? But when it does come, you'll feel like you lived here for just one day. That's the last conversation of the surah. So how many sections did I say? Six. Now appreciate the following. The surah began with two parts. Part one and two. Part one was judgment day, and part two was skepticism about judgment day. If you go to the end of the surah, it's also two parts. Judgment day and questioning judgment day. So it's actually mirroring what happened in the beginning of the surah. Structurally, one and two are pretty much mirrored by five and six, completing each other. You see that? And the center of the surah is basically a lesson from, uh, by the way, if you, I'll take you one more step back, back. One and two, and five and six, the beginning and the end of the surah are all about the future, are they not? Because judgment day is when? In the future. And there are only three components of time. What are they? Past, present, and future. So the surah begins with the future and it also ends with the future. What's left? What are the two elements of time left? The past and the present. What's the middle of the surah? The middle of the surah is the past, pharaohs, and the world around you that you should observe like the smooth earth and the open sky and the pasture, which is your what? Present. Learn from your past and apply it to your present so you're ready for your future. Incredible. It's. The, the, the marvel of the symmetry of the Qur'an. So that's one thing that I wanted to highlight. The next thing that I want to highlight is additional notes. Um, those of you that are English majors should take note of this, because you should do, every paper you do should be on a surah of the Qur'an. When your teacher says, pick a, pick a paper, do a literary paper on one surah of the Qur'an. You'll have the time of your life, and it'll be a spiritual experience too. Okay, for the, for the two of you that were allowed to be English majors, because that's not a real job, and you know, what are you going to do with that? Because what's the importance of language? <laughs> Programming, now there's something to do. You know, speak the language of machines. Uh, anyway, drowning, وَالنَّازِعَاتِ غَرْقَى وَالنَّازِعَاتِ غَرْقَى Which was those, the horses that are being yanked and the drowning that takes place. The drowning could be when they're pulled completely, but drowning could also mean when they drown into their enemies. When they rage into their enemies. And that's also an illusory reference to something else. When Judgment Day comes, the angels will dive into the people to execute the punishment of Allah and the, the, the organization of people, right? Later on, Allah mentioned in the surah the story of the Pharaoh. The story of the Pharaoh, interestingly, should remind you of something, drowning. Because the Pharaoh also what? 
drowned. So there's, there's, a, there's a correlation that's subtle, but there. Notice also, wasabiqati sabqa, something I did mention before, the horses that are raiding, that get ahead, sabiq also in Arabic also means when the front legs of the horse are fully extended and they march forward. And the pharaoh, there's a parallel to that too, because the pharaohs were given a kind of power and status that nobody else enjoyed in the worlds. وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ مَا فِيهِ بَلَاءٌ مُبِينٌ وَلَقَدْ اِخْتَرْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عَلَىٰ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah says about the pharaohs, we chose them over all other nations, gave them power that nobody was ever given. And gave them signs that nobody was ever given. But notice that those first ayat, where the horses are raiding, they, you know, a lot of the mufassirun said, this is not about horses, it's about the angels, taking the souls, you remember that? Okay, so listen, some of the words that are used in that passage, were فَالْمُدَبِّرَاتِ amra. They plan out the decision. You know, if you study the Qur'an, that phrase is used for Allah. يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ Multiple times. ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرَ فَسَيَقُولُونَ الله. Who plans the affair? Who plans the decision? So the phrase planning the decision is used elsewhere for Allah. And here it's used in a sense of the, 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 the raiders that are executing the plan, right? There seems to be some connection. Similarly, we saw nazi'at. Naz'at means to what? Pull. If you look at the verb elsewhere in the Qur'an, ثُمَّ لَنَنْزِعَنَّ مِنْ كُلِّ شِيعَةٍ أَيُّهُمْ أَشَدُّ عَلَى الرَّحْمَانِ عِتِيَّةٍ In Surah, Surah Maryam, Allah says, we will pull from every group who were the rebellious. We will yank from every group. So the, if you look at the usage of words, there's a parallel to other places in the Qur'an, and I'll tie that together in a second. We saw wasabihati sabha, in that image of the, the raiders, those who swim. And when Allah describes heavenly bodies, He says, وَكُلٌّ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ They're floating. In other words, we are describing a raid that's happening, but actually at the same time, we're describing a raid of, in a sense, cosmic proportions. Something that's heaven, it's alluding to something heavenly at the same time, as it's looking at something in the worldly sense. That is why words like rajifa and radifa and hafira are important. Because, now check this out, rajifa means disturbance. Like when the raid happens, there's a disturbance. Radifa means second wave. The, the, the second wave of judgment day. Just like the raiders, you think the attack is done, but there's another wave of attack. Hafira means original state. But hafira also means the ditch made by, or the, 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 the mark made on the ground by the hoof of a horse, which goes back to the raid of the morning. Right? So the word hafira also takes you back to the, the, the morning. And then my favorite, فَإِنَّمَا هِيَ زَجْرَةٌ وَاحِدًا Remember Allah described judgment day as it's going to be one loud cry, and everybody will be standing. You know what happens when there's a night raid? The first one to wake up, what does he do? Attack! Raiders! He'll call it out and everybody else is there. And one day, they, he does that. When the one villager sounds the alarm, one zajra, what happens to everybody else? Now they're up all night. Look at the ayah of Judgment Day. He says, فَإِنَّمَا هِيَ زَجْرَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ It's gonna be one outcry. فَإِذَا هُمْ بِالسَّاهِرَةٌ Then they're gonna be up in the middle of the night. Like Judgment Day paralleled with that night raid again. Then in the moment of meeting with Allah, what did Allah say? إِذْ نَادَاهُ رَبُّهُ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ طُوَى When Allah met, met with Musa السلام, in the valley of Tuwa. You know, Allah didn't mention what He said to Musa here, but we're supposed to know already what He said. The first thing Allah said to Musa السلام, in some, many places, or the most important thing, that's even mentioned in the Bible, إِنَّنِي أَنَا اللَّهِ إِنِّي أَنَا رَبُّكَ No doubt, it is I, Allah. It is I, your master. Ya Musa, innahu an Allah, al azizul hakim. Musa, it is I, Allah, the ultimate authority, the wise. Ya Musa, inni an Allahu rabbul alameen. I am Allah, master of the worlds. Exodus says, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. This is what God said to Moses on the mountain. So in all of these references, God introduces himself as God, which is directly in contrast with the Pharaoh who stood up on his fake mountain, and what did he say? Ana rabbukum ala. Ana rabbukum ala. So the, the, the contrast has already been set in place by the reference to both of those things. And the contrast in, includes other subtle connections. The Pharaoh, what did he do with the believers? He rode after them to attack them. And the surah began with what? A morning raid. And when he rode after them, he was drowned. Wasn't he? 
And here you have وَالنَّازِعَاتِ غَرْقَى And so the contrast between both of those is, is it shouldn't be lost on us. The other interesting thing here is that Allah says they execute His decisions. فَالْمُدَبِّرَاتِ amra. And doesn't matter what the Pharaoh planned, the execution was done. The, the, the root letters, mudabbirat, occur again in the story of the Pharaoh when he says, ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَ يَسْعَى أَدْبَرَ يَسْعَى So he made his plans, Allah had his own plans. Allah is teaching us through that, doesn't matter if your enemy is as powerful as Pharaoh. And whatever efforts and plans he makes, Allah has his own plans. And they will be executed. You also notice, the story began, the surah began, did it begin with morning or did it begin with night? What do you think? It began with the night, because the raid happens at night time. Notice the language. He made the night almost invisible to see through, and he made the morning brilliant. He started that parable also with the night, almost taking us back to that raid. One of the most interesting things I found about this surah is when Allah mentions pasture, Greenery, grazing. You remember how I was telling you that it's related to the Pharaoh? And how they were the only ones that had pasture left? Check this out. Every time in the Quran, Allah mentions ra'a, mar'a, ra'i, pasture. Musa alayhi salam is in that surah. Sabbih isma rabbika la'ala, alladhi qaddara fahada, walladhi akhrajal, mar'a. Same word. By the end of that surah, إِنَّ هَذَا لَفِ الصُّحُفِ الْأُولَى صُحُفِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى Musa spoke directly to the Pharaoh and said, كُلُوا وَرْعَوْ أَنْعَامَكُمْ Graze your animals. Graze your animals. He said to the Pharaoh. And here in this surah, by the end of that passage, this, all of this grazing is for you and your animals. مَتَاعًا لَكُمْ وَلِيَنْعَامِكُمْ It's almost as though this surah is echoing the words of Musa alayhi salam, reliving the struggle of Musa alayhi salam in, this illusory, in these illusory references. As a matter of fact, one of the coolest things, even in the, when Musa escaped uh, Egypt, and he was out in Madian, and he helped those two young ladies, you know what they said to him? لَا نَسْقِي حَتَّى يُسْتِرَ الرِّعَاءَ وَأَبُونَا شَيْخٌ كَبِيرٌ we will not feed our animals any drink until the ri'a is done. The pasture, the rest of the pasture is done feeding. So ri'a and Musa come over and over and over again as they do in this surah. And ri'a never occurs in a surah without Musa alayhi salam in it. Now, the, interesting, uh, the other interesting contrasts here that I wanted to highlight. What did Fir'aun deny? فَأَرَاهُ الْآيَةَ kubra. And by the end of the surah, فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَّةُ Kubra. Well, there's the, that's not an accident. When you deny the greatest sign, you will face the greatest calamity. There's a correlation between those two words, even phonetically. Al Kubra, Al Kubra. Then you find, Yawma yatadhakkarul insanu ma sa'a. At the end, people will remember the efforts that they made. Especially people like Fir'aun. Thumma adbara yas'a. Yas'a sa'a. They come together. And by the way, there's a third word in this list that shares the, shares the same root. Yes, alunaka an asaa, asaa, saa, yasa, all connected. There's a saa coming where you will remember the sa'i that you made. It's all tying things together. You find in the surah whoever rebelled, fa amma man taga, whoever rebelled. Remember that? Guess what? When what the Pharaoh was introduced, what did Allah say? Idhab ila Fir'aun innahu. It's coming back again, reminding you, don't be like the Pharaoh. There's a connection between the two. When we talked about those who are skeptical of the Akhirah, there were two passages, right? The second passage and the sixth passage, those who question the Akhirah are skeptical of the Akhirah. They both start the same way. They say, they ask, they question. You know, it's this, and in the beginning they asked a question. At the end they're asking a question, Ayana Mursaha. When is it coming? Allah is saying they will ask all kinds of silly questions. That still doesn't mean they deserve an answer. And so and, and, and then you you look also at innama, the response in both cases. In the first case, Allah said, Fa innama hiya zajratun wahida. He responded to them with the word. Innama. The second time they make a criticism, Innama antamunziru man yakshaha. 
You're just the one to respond. By the way, I was studying an Orientalist paper. Several people have written on this surah. And the Orientalists believe the Quran was authored by the Prophet or several authors. They don't believe it's from Allah, right? So they said about this surah, there's no connections, it's all over the place. This surah must have been put together much later on. Because nothing's connected. I'm like, seriously? You're not connected. Because even the devices of words, like innama ta innama, yaquluna ta yasaluna, the, the regiment is so perfectly organized, the, the design here is so incredible, for you to say that this is random, uh, you're random. But I mean, they can get a PhD paper off of writing it. That's why you guys need to study literature and do PhDs on surahs of the Quran. So people see, and academics sit there and go, whoa, why I am stupid. There is something here. There is something powerful here, you know. And so now, أَخْرَجَ لَيْلَهَا أَغْتَشَ لَيْلَهَا وَأَخْرَجَ ضُحَاهَا Allah referred before that He brought out its night and brought out its morning and by the end, judgment day, what's He going to say? كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَهَا لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا عَشِيَةً أَوْ ضُحَاهَا Night and day come back again and again. It is as though Allah is saying every time you see night and day, you should remember, you're going to think it was just one night and one day. He tied those two notions together once again. My fa one of my favorites, Wal Jibala Arsaha. He pegged the mountains down. And the, the criminals, the skeptics, have the audacity to say, Yes, Aluna ka anisa'ati ayyana mursaha. When is the hour gonna drop down? It is as though Allah is saying, You who don't recognize that Allah will drop mountains down, you dare question when the day of judgment is gonna drop down on you? You want to know the mursa of the one who is the mursi of the jibal? Ayyana mursaha, the, the, again the words tying together like that. Innama anta munziru man yakhshaha. You are only there to warn the one who will be afraid of it. What, the, what was the Pharaoh told? The Pharaoh was told, Wa ahdiyaka ila rabbika fattakhsha. Inna fi thalika la ibratan liman yakhsha. And by the end, the Prophet is told, listen, you will preach to everyone, but the only ones you'll get through to are the people who internally, deep inside of themselves, carry a fear. The, the themes of the surah are built upon the words that are dropped and the subtle hints that are dropped and they progress and develop one on top of the other, you know, painting an entire complete picture. May Allah Azza wa give us a, an appreciation of the power and the beauty of the Qur'an and may Allah increase our iman and our taqwa and make us of those who do not give preference to worldly life as was criticized in this surah. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.